My family on both sides left Tibet after the Chinese invasion and followed the Dalai Lama into exile. I was born and raised in one of the Tibetan refugee settlements of North India. As a function of growing up in an exile community trying to reroute itself into foreign soil, we were cut off from our historical past, from our historical literature and culture. Of course, for Tibetans growing up on the other side of the mountains, this break from the past was imposed by the Chinese state. This separation from our literary past was compounded by the fact that modern Tibetan literature was still in its infancy. Thus, on both sides of the Himalayas, we grew up orphaned from our literature. For the young reader in me, this meant a peculiar kind of abandonment and isolation, the lack of one's reflection in the surfaces and the depths around oneself, an insular isolation that only makes itself known when something finally pierces it. For me, that moment was when I read Tenzin Sundu's poem, When It Rains in Dharamsala. I read it electrified and began to write a poem. It was not just that I knew the rain in Dharamsala, it was that I knew Sundu, and he was just like me. I had always been a reader, but that was the first time I thought maybe I could be a writer as well. There are many Tibetan writers now, their works fill our shelves and their words echo our lives. These writers come from Tibet and from all over the world, and they write in multiple languages. They write memoirs, novels, essays, poems, but whatever else they do, they also write short stories. Their stories give the English reading audience a more authentic look at the lives of ordinary Tibetans navigating the space between tradition and modernity, occupation and exile, the national and the personal. For Tibetans, they do something a great deal more they examine and explain our heartbreak, the heartbreak of our occupation, our exile, our diaspora. And in doing so, they give us comfort, clarity, and a measure of belonging. Short stories have become, finally, one of the primary modern Tibetan art forms.